like their land-based cousins, aquatic plants grow in a whole range of situations, whether deeply submerged or just dipping their toes on the periphery. In general, planting zones are measured from zone five, which is the deepest, to zone one for the pond edge. Today, the shallowness of my pond and the narrowness of the bank allows me to plant only in the middle zones, two, three, and four. Now, because these plants will be submerged, or at least partly submerged, we need a pretty heavy mix. So what we're gonna go for is a mix of two parts loam, one part gravel, one part sand. Now, it's a lot easier just to pre-mix this, but you know, two of those, one of those, one of those. Once we've got that in there, it's a bit like baking a cake, which is always a fun thing to do. Now, aquatic plants will require a pot that allows water flow. And of course, the size of the plant and the depth of the water will determine the size of the pot you use. Now, depending on the size of the pot, you can put a few rocks in the bottom to really keep it anchored. Now, zone four is a deep immersion between 20 and 40 centimetres. Plants that can go in there are things like marbled marsh wort or any of the water lilies, anything that can handle being fully submerged. So this occasion, we're going to use water lawn or water grass. Now, this one, just enough room there. The one thing you don't want are air bubbles. So you want to make sure that you've got enough of your soil mix in and around the plant. We've got a little bit of room around the outside. Now just put a little bit of added weight. We'll grab a few rocks. That really should anchor it to the bottom. That should work. Now zone three, fully submerged, but just not quite as deep as zone four. So we're gonna go things like water milfoil and running marsh flower. Zone two, well, that's along the water's edge. And plants in here can be things like knobby-headed club rush and the tassel cord rush. Now, aquatic plants generally don't require nutrient because they should be able to get enough from the pond environment. So they should be able to take care of themselves. All that's left now is to get these into the water. Well, here we go. All right. Whew. Now, hard part's getting in here, but moment of truth. Let's see if our submerged plants stay submerged. So far, so good. I have to dig this one in a little bit. There we go. That's the water grass, fully submerged, not going anywhere. A little bit shallower, we'll go to zone three. We've got our water milfoil. Now, our running marsh flower. Similar depth. Looks great. Now, just gotta take these edge plants, pop them in. Oh, there we go. Oh, all right. So, zone two. The pond edge, one thing you have to be careful of, of course, is the liner that keeps the water in these water features. And this dwarf tassel cord, it's been in this pot for a while. There we go, nice and gentle. Give ourselves a decent hole. I'm pretty happy with that spot. That's one down, one to go. If you want to spruce up your water feature and create a new playground for all of your pond life and insects, why not give this simple, hassle-free solution a go?